This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Watch from the MW Technology Channel on YouTube. And in this video, we'll be doing a direct comparison between the LG G Pro 2 and the Samsung Galaxy S5. Now, both these phones have been released quite recently, and they're really quite different in some ways in terms of their physical aspects, but they're quite identical almost when you take a look at the internal specifications. So this is a really a big shot at LG trying to get up to what Samsung's doing. So let's see how they've done and let's see how the phone compares against the Samsung S5. Now the Samsung Galaxy S line of products is a very very popular product and LG certainly wants to get into that market of being kind of one of the top kind of smartphones for Android and this is kind of a shot at doing that. The LG G Pro 2 is uh, certainly a larger device, it's more in lines of a phablet, but a lot of people will be interested in how these two devices compare against each other since they're quite similar in a lot of different ways, even though they're physically a little bit different. Now speaking of the physicals themselves, you'll notice that the Samsung Galaxy S5 is a little bit more compact, measuring about 142 millimeters in terms of its height, and the LG G Pro 2 being quite a lot taller, being 157.9 millimeters in terms of its height. Now in terms of width, there's not too much of a difference. The G Pro 2 measures about 81.9 millimeters and the S5 measures about 72.5 millimeters. Now as we go on to the actual thicknesses of the two devices, you'll be very surprised of how thin the LG G Pro 2 is, measuring only about 8.3 millimeters versus the Samsung measuring about 8.1 millimeters. So very, very impressive on the LG side. Now in terms of weight themselves, the G Pro 2 is heavier measuring about 172 grams versus the Samsung only being about 145 grams. And when you feel both these two devices in your hand, you will certainly notice that weight difference. Now the overall footprint of these two devices are also quite significantly different. When you hold them both in your hand, you do have a very different sensation of holding them. The LG G Pro 2 is certainly in line with the Samsung Note series of products being more of a phablet. Now in terms of the construction themselves, you'll notice it's very similar. Now the Samsung S5 has a perforated back. It feels very nice and soft, very comfortable much like what we found on the Note 3. And the overall construction is very solid, a huge improvement from last year's S5. It doesn't flex as much, and it's definitely a uh, thumbs up. Now, the LG G Pro 2 is also made out of similar high-quality plastic materials, but it certainly does flex, and uh, being a larger size and uh, being reasonably light, it's definitely not as solidly made as the uh, Samsung S5, in my opinion. However, it does feel like a premium product. It definitely doesn't feel cheap at all, but it does flex a little bit considering its overall construction. Now another cool thing about the Samsung Galaxy S5 is that it is IP67 certified, making it both dust and water resistant. So water resistant up to one meter deep for 30 minutes. Very, very good. Unfortunately, the LG G Pro 2 does not have that certification. Of course, you can make the LG G Pro 2 water resistant if you send it to a third party company that will put some uh, hydrophobic uh, solutions in there so it's a little bit more water resistant but it's certainly not water resistant straight out of the box. Now when we take a look at the expandabilities, we also find some huge similarities between these two phones. If we take a look at the back, we can both replace the back and put in a new battery, as well as expand the internal memory up to 128 gigs via micro SD expansion slot. Now in both cases, if you're a really heavy user, thankfully both of these, of course, have a user replaceable battery. You will notice on the Samsung has a smaller battery measuring about 2800 milliamp hours versus the LG has a 3200 milliamp hour battery, which obviously means that the LG is gonna consume a little bit more electricity electricity, but overall they're very, very good. They both over get 20 hours of 3G talk time. The LG G Pro 2 is sometimes getting a little bit better than what I found on the Samsung S5, mostly because of its bigger battery and when you have them both on power saver modes, they're very, very efficient and they'll maximize the amount of battery that you get. So if you're a power user, both phones are very, very good. Now one thing you will notice externally is that the Samsung has a fingerprint 
fingerprint sensor as well as a heart rate monitor at the back of the device. The fingerprint sensor is great. You can basically scan your fingerprint and sign on to your different applications, unlock your phone, and basically it will replace your password if you wanted to. It is also officially supported by PayPal, which is one of the first smartphones with a fingerprint scanner to do so. The LG G Pro 2 on the rear has basically a volume rocker and in the center we have a power standby switch which is definitely good for one hand operation and works really well. Of course it's kind of useless once it's on a table but it is a cool innovative design. Of course if you're used to the uh, power standby switch being in one position if you're switching over from one phone to the next it does get, get awkward in terms of always using that back button because there's really no other uh, switches or buttons on the LG G Pro 2. The Samsung on the back, as we mentioned, has a heart rate monitor, which is really tightly integrated into its S Health system in the phone, which is designed to be a little bit more smarter uh, if you want to live a more healthier lifestyle and monitor your heart rate if you're doing health oriented activities. And it certainly has great integration for the new smartphone watches. So if you're interested in getting a smartwatch, uh, you definitely have some great integration with the GS5. Now let's talk about the screens over here. Now in terms of resolution, they're identical. They're both 1920 by 1080. Now the Samsung, because of its smaller 5.1 inch screen size and the LG being a little bit larger, about 5.9 inch screen, they are a little bit different in terms of pixel density. The Samsung is rated for about 432 versus 373 on the LG. So a little bit sharper images and overall text does appear to be clearer on the Samsung Galaxy S5. Um, in terms of durability, they're both using Cording Gorilla Glass 3, which is excellent for resisting against scratches from your keys and other daily kind of objects that might scratch your screen, as well as being pretty strong and resistant in terms of shattering. Of course, they're not going to be completely shatterproof. You take a hammer to the screen or drop it off of a three-story building, the screens will definitely crack, but they're definitely very, very durable. Now, one cool thing about the Samsung Galaxy S5 screen is that it is a super AMOLED display so very good in terms of black levels and color rendition is also great very vibrant display the LG also has a very similar display and backlight technology making it equal in terms of that image quality however the Samsung does have adaptive screen mode which is going to change the actual screen contrast ratio the actual saturation of colors the sharpness itself making it more adaptable in different lighting situations where works really really well. Now in terms of the internal specifications they're very similar again they both have a Snapdragon 801 chip uh, which is a quad core processor clocked in about 2.5 gigahertz on the Samsung S5 and about 2.26 gigahertz on the LG G Pro 2. The LG G Pro 2 does have a little bit more RAM being about 3 gigabytes of RAM and when we take a look at the Geekbench score we do find a little bit of similarities with the score. Now here on the LG G Pro 2, we're getting a little bit better in terms of the single core test. It's basically getting about 948 versus about 891 on the Samsung S5. Now on the multi-core, it's kind of a different story, even though they're using pretty much the same processors, you're looking at about 2852 on the S5 and about 2569 on the LG G Pro 2. Now guys, we're gonna continue with our comparison, but before we go any further, let's take a look at our sponsor for this review. This comparison video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own personal website, portfolio, and online store. For a free trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com and enter our offer code SYED at checkout. And remember that a better web starts with your website. Now, if any of you guys have thought about making your own website, it's now easier than ever when you use Squarespace. They have very simple and easy to use interface with beautiful template designs. Everything is drag and drop and it's very intuitive. They also have 24 hour tech support if you need any help. Plans start at $8 a month and it includes a free domain name when you sign up for the year. Another cool thing about Squarespace is that every website that you build has its own online store so you can start selling your merchandise, your products right off the bat. Start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use our offer code SYED to get 10% off of your first purchase and to show your support. 
support for MW Technology. We thank Squarespace for their support of MW Technology. And remember, Squarespace, a better web starts with your website. Now, in terms of connectivity, both the LG and the Samsung are LTE. In terms of the Wi-Fi capabilities, both have 802.11 N and AC capabilities. So if you have an AC router, they're going to take advantage of those faster speeds. And they both have Bluetooth 4.0 NFC capabilities. They both have infrared technology. Uh, one thing that the Samsung has is the new micro USB 3.0 standard versus the 2.0 USB standard that's in the LG G Pro 2. So in terms of data transferring speed through the micro USB cable. If you have a USB uh, 3.0 port on your PC or laptop, you're definitely going to find faster file transfer speeds if you do a lot of that. Now here is where we see even more similarities between these two phones when we take a look at the cameras that comes in both smartphones. In terms of the front facing cameras, the both have basically a 2 megapixel still camera and they can both do 1080p at 30 frames per second in terms of the front facing camera. And if we take a look at their rear facing cameras, again very similar specifications. Basically 13 megapixel stills on the LG and 16 megapixels on the Samsung. Now the cool thing is that they're both fairly high resolution stills and uh, really good quality overall. Now cool thing about the Samsung rear facing camera is that it does have a new autofocusing system which is basically going to allow phase detection autofocusing which is a new standard for cell phones to have very very fast autofocusing. Basically the phase detection is really available in only higher end photography cameras such as DSLRs and things like that. So it's very good for shooting shooting kids and fast moving sports and things like that. So if you do a lot of photography with a lot of fast motion, it's amazing in terms of the speed. It also has selective focusing mode, which is going to allow you to more easily uh, separate your subject from your foreground, getting a little bit more dramatic shots that way. Now in terms of the video capabilities, they're pretty much identical. Thankfully, they both have 4K video capabilities at 30 frames per second, and they can both do 1080p at 60 frames per second, as well as high speed 720p mode, 120 frames per second on both the LG and on the Samsung. Now, because these phones are fairly similar in terms of specification, let's take a look at some sample images and videos to figure out which actually looks better to your eyes. Now looking at the OS themselves, the Samsung Galaxy S5 and the LG G Pro 2 are basically running the exact same OS underneath their kind of uh, skin that they have, which is 4.4.2 KitKat. And the Samsung is using the latest generation of TouchWiz UI, which is a very good UI for getting access to your convenient kind of commands and controls that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. As well as the Optimus G UI on the LG is very similar to the Touch UI. I wouldn't be surprised if the two Korean companies kind of peek above each other's shoulders when they're developing the software for their smartphones. And in both cases, they're very similar. I think uh, in terms of the skins themselves, you won't find too many differences between these UIs. So really try them out yourself, see which one fits your needs and uh, your kind of preferences. And, and then go from there. In my opinion, I do love the Samsung Touch UI because I'm that's what I'm kind of used to. The Optimus G UI is not bad, but uh, overall, since I'm more used to the, the Touch UI from having previous generation Samsung products, it kind of suits my needs a little bit better. But there's certainly nothing wrong with the Optimus G UI. Certainly a lot of conveniences and a lot of features in both regards. But on that guys, if you have any questions about anything I talked about, please make sure to leave that on a comment down below. If you have any specific reasons why you would pick one phone or the other, please make sure to also leave that on a comment down below. I'm really interested in seeing what you guys think of these two phones, especially head to head against each other. And if you haven't already, please make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, Majid Sayyid 2, to get more comparisons. We have a whole bunch of comparisons as you'll see on the channel. So definitely check those out if you have the time but thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later take care now lastly please don't forget to visit squarespace.com syed and enter our offer code syed to get 10 percent off of your first purchase and to show your support for our show mm -hmm.